Hello and welcome. But before we begin, I wanted to say that Icon City offered a sponsorship for this video by giving us 10% off with the code Nubifier. And then any comment in this video is eligible to win one of five free packs. Winners are going to be chosen in two weeks, which will be the 29th of June, 2022. Thanks to them and their growing list of Icon packs that offer something for everyone. And now on with the show. Nexus is the Latin word for connection, usually where multiple elements meet. After testing this and seeing what it does, I feel that it's very appropriate that Avermedia decided to use that word when naming this stream mixer. And also as an Avermedia partner and a user of their products, I want to let you know that there's a growing list of promo codes in all of the descriptions of every video that'll help save you money. Hello YouTubers, this is Anubifier. This product was released well over a year ago and now it's evolved with even better firmware. Very early reviews of this product will have indicated that the Nexus was unable to provide enough power to drive a Shure SM7B because it lacked the power. That limitation was patched out very early on and that is actually the microphone that I use to live stream. I can assure you that it can drive these and very low dB microphones without the use of a cloud lifter. Last year, lots of things changed for me in a very short time. I returned from a deployment to Kuwait near the 30 year mark of service. It made sense to me to retire at that time and focus full time on content. Covering the evolution of Star Citizen is super important. The videos are a fantastic outlet for me and hopefully you agree as a viewer. It's clear that reporting, making guides and reviews work very well in video, but there's an aspect of live streaming which really works very well with the business of actually playing the game. Being live in Star Citizen and other titles results in a more direct community interaction and a type of engagement that you do not get from a video. And because of that, I need to explore live content and I needed to become comfortable with it so I can be more professional. We are all still expecting Squadron 42 and Star Citizen to launch, so I need to be ready to evolve the channel and learn how to live stream. I can't just stream there without getting used to it, so I spent time learning how to stream on a second channel, Nubifier 2. And now, months later, I've had enough time with the Avermedia suite to give you a proper review. This video will be a quick rundown of the company. I'm going to speak about its competitors in this price range. I'm going to explain what a mixer does, and then I'm going to tell you how this one does it differently. I will also need to cover what a Stream Deck is and what it does because the Nexus combines a mixer with all of the functions of a Stream Deck. All of this in a very slick little platform. Even if you're not in the market for a mixer, I promise this should be interesting. So we begin with Avermedia. The company was founded in 1990, headquartered in Taiwan, initially with the goal of making high quality video capture more accessible to the masses. Avermedia Technologies now brings content creators and their audience together with a growing set of products, but despite this, I feel that they're still best known for their capture cards. Capture cards alone do not satisfy our needs, so they expanded into webcams and this nexus. And consider that as we're now working from home in larger numbers, these products can improve your productivity. In no way is a mixer a new idea. It's a very simple device that's used any time where you would need to blend many inputs into one. If you need to do this task, you're actually looking for a mixer. This can be done for a recording studio, at a concert, a podcast between two creators. And in the case of live streaming, your normal sound sources would be a microphone, stream alerts, game audio, music, and discord. Sliders and dials let you blend this on the fly, but as a creator, you might like to hear the blended audio differently than what you're broadcasting. The Nexus can blend a creator mix as well as an audience mix if needed. The easier and more flexible this is, the better. Once it's set up and working, you become the director, the talent, and the engineer. It's your show, and as I found over six months, this device connected to whatever you have removes confusion and keeps you focused on your audience. Other products do this too. Its direct competitors are from Rode and GoXLR, which are also very popular. I have actually bought a GoXLR to test before testing for this video. It's very important for me to have that knowledge when speaking about a product, so I test its competition. The Go XLR is a little bit cheaper, it's physically larger, and it has similar audio connectivity. As a mixer, they function very similar with similar sound routing options in the software. I actually prefer the large sliders instead of the dials, but the extra size needed for them would have been an issue. I actually got used to the dials as each move 5%, so a very minor adjustment needs only one click, not several. What really stood out for me on this product was the promise of many things in one device. It's exciting to consolidate many types of gear into one. On only one small panel, I have at my disposal what would normally take a team of people to achieve, achieve high production value without the team of technicians and directors. The Nexus itself is constructed from plastic. It has a nice matte finish, four buttons, six dials, and a glossy touchscreen. 
The underside is designed to sit on an included magnetic stand that will lift it and tilt it on an angle. It will sit pretty on a desk, but because it's small as I found out, it'll let you become a little bit more creative. I was able to put this little feature to great use by fixing the base with some 3M double-sided tape to my stream cart. Continuing the tour of the outside, the four main buttons are programmable in the software and they'll let you do pretty much anything that you have available. Think of these as your most important functions that you may want to do all the time. I have one that'll mute my main microphone. It's set to change from green to red to indicate whether the microphone is hot or not. All of the lighting everywhere can be configured to match your setup. There's a functional light bar that goes from the left through the front and up the right side. Just like the buttons, it can simply match your system or it can do that RGB uh, rainbow clown puke thing. I decided to put it to better use. My surround is usually green, but it'll glow red whenever OBS is recording or if I'm live streaming. This little feature has saved me twice from recording all night at the end of a stream. So when shutting down for the night after the stream, if I see red on the Nexus, I'm reminded that I have at least one more thing to do. There are six dials that make up the mixer, I actually use five of them all the time. Some are connected to virtual inputs and some are physical plugs on the back. Microphone is for the physical XLR input. Line in is a physical 1 8 inch jack. Console is a physical toss link jack. That's the optical. System, game, and chat are all virtual devices that will show up once the USB is connected to a computer. System is a mirror of the PC, so this is where my stream alerts in OBS would get adjusted. Game is where I adjust the game audio, and I can isolate the game audio separately from the stream alerts. Chat is for Discord, so I can quickly manage the chatter for myself and the audience. As I said, there's a feature where I can set what I hear and what the stream hears separately. I may need to hear Discord louder, and I might want Spotify music to be softer, but louder for the audience, so that I can focus on the game. Perhaps I want my voice to be higher than Discord. The headphone jack on the rear is one way to separate the creator mix from the audience mix. It includes a zero latency monitor for that microphone input. Pushing on any of the six dials will mute and unmute. Each have tactile clicks with a lead volume indicator. These can be customized. Twisting will show the current gain, but after a second or two, they will visually show you the output like a voice meter. You can see, for example, if your microphone is clipping yellow or very hard into the red. You can visually see, for example, if your music is louder than your game audio or if Discord chat is overpowering your own voice. Unfortunately, they do react quite slowly and serve only as a general guide. They do not and cannot replace a proper precise meter, which is more like what you'd see on the Go XLR. But at a quick glance on the Nexus, you'll see if something is off and needs your attention. Rounding out the rear, in the recessed hole, there is a Type B USB, which is something like you'd find on a printer, a power port, and a power switch when not in use. A great quality USB wire is included and the external power adapter with a very long wire. So, because of this complete suite of adjustments, I can change the mood, change the focus, or adjust what you're looking at. I can immediately adjust when chat informs me that the microphone is too high or the music is too low, as expected from any single mixer. But it's exactly at this point where the Avermedia Live Nexus and the Go XLR stop being similar. It's best to quickly explain what a Stream Deck does. By doing so, I will also explain the majority of some of the specialized additional functions of the Nexus. A Stream Deck is a very simple and powerful programmable button box with physical buttons each having individual LCD screens. When connected to a computer, you have the flexibility to choose from a list of functions. You can assign what each button does, but then you get to customize the icon to represent the function. Icons can be simple or animated. Icons can change based on the state either active or inactive, pushing your functionality even more. A very powerful tool that was created to help streamers manage the workload, but this device is so useful that it's been found everywhere. In Star Citizen, you can control ship functions such as systems, doors, and comms. In Photoshop, you can quickly change brushes, automate repeated tasks. In car simulations, you can adjust brake balance, issue a command to the pit crew. In flight simulators, you can map out common systems, manage autopilot, and change views. You can create anything from a simple key press all the way to very complex macros. Streamers use it to trigger alerts, change scenes, change the lighting, change cameras, tweet out announcements, and people love to customize and accessorize. As I said, you get to choose the icon that makes the most sense, but you don't need to do the work because others have done it for you.
The five inch screen is configured similar to a Stream Deck, but it does so much more. By swiping left or right on the screen, you have access to five full pages. Each page can have five by four or 20 individual sections in a grid for a total of 100 buttons plus the four paths. You can duplicate common tasks on any screen such as global mute or put those on the four paths. Ultimate flexibility. The regular system features are expanded with specific integration. With the screen, not only can you do everything similar to a Stream Deck, but you can do more with special segments. There's a 2x4 live chat box, a 2x2 live viewer count, and a sub follower count for YouTube and Twitch. You can see how many people are watching you live and what they're saying, which is even more valuable if you're streaming from a single monitor setup or on the road on a laptop. I noticed there was a 4 second delay in chat update. Spotify is also fully integrated, and this is where most streamers get their background music for the stream. Play, pause, next, back, volume, shuffle, repeat are options, but there's also a 3x2 panel with artist, track name, duration, and even album art. This is great if chat asks you what track is playing. You can simply look down and see without making a mess of the stream. OBS and Streamlabs OBS have a basic set of hotkeys. These are mute, record, change scenes, change source. And Avermedia has added their own hotkeys for Cam Engine and Rec Central for effects filters and you can record and stream. I haven't used those functions personally, but if I was working remotely, I would love to have a little bit of extra control for my meetings. And as I said, you can do all of the regular stuff. You can launch programs, play a sound, open a file, execute a text macro, open a website, perform multi-action macros, and toggle microphone effects. There's a single 5x3 widget which takes up pretty much the entire screen and it's called Mixer Dashboard. It gives you so much direct control and feedback. You can visually see what and where everything is going on with your audio. You can toggle between creator and audience mix and there you'll also visually see the six sources as part of your mix, muted or unmuted, a number to represent the level and a corresponding line. This page I have set as a hotkey to the blue right pad. Pushing that pad jumps me directly to this page so I can have a look. The left blue pad jumps me directly to my scene selection page. It's all super quick and lets me manage the entire stream without any distraction. And as a quick shout out to a channel partner, Icon City, who have reached out with that 10% code, Icon City makes icons in themed packs so that you don't have to. I have them on my Stream Deck and on my Nexus. Rather than making my own, Icon City does the thinking and all of the creative work for me. They're priced right and the code Nubifier will add savings. The colored animated sets are crazy looking with a special level of personalization. And as far as the review of the live streamer Nexus, goes, I hope that I've been able to convey how important it is to me. As for the specifics of how mine is configured, that could be its own 30 minute video in the future. So if you're interested in that, please post comments so I can work on it, or you can join the Discord and ask me there. The software is now very mature and very evolved. Its integration is simple and complete. It can be set up for one or two PC streaming, and it can be used for nothing more complex than your own personal productivity to manage Zoom calls, but it's very much ready to help you with your stream. It looks awesome, it takes up no space, and if you've made it to this point and you still don't know what you would do with it, then thank you very much for watching and it's likely not something that you need. Lots of people are starting to stream and this is the nexus that you're looking for. It's right there at my side to help me micromanage the stream in a way that I could not achieve without it. And that's it. A little behind the scenes with some information about a new piece of tech that's proven to be critical. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. Stream safe and I'll see you in the verse.